Give me the next 10 to 15 minutes of your life and I will tell you how to make the most out of your university education. Who am I? I am Alex. I recently graduated with an electrical engineering degree. During that time, I managed to get internships in software, hardware, AI engineering, and managed to pull off a full-time software engineering role at Europe's largest bank. And I'm here to make videos and help you out. That's everything. Let's go. I think the first and most important thing that I'm going to speak about here is the idea of directed and undirected ambition. You clicked on this video, so therefore you are an ambitious student. However, you need to make sure to identify yourself because it it's these are two completely different worlds. Ambitious and undirected students feel a huge sense of anxiety because they have this energy built up inside of them they're like ah i want to do something i want to do something i want to build a project i want to i want to get smarter i want to get better i want a job but they don't know exactly what they have a foggy vision of what they want to do nothing is really clear there's a lot of energy but no plan no execution ideation directed ambition is when you look at where you are right now and you look at where you want to be and you write the steps that need to take place to get from where you are to where you want to be. Part of directed ambition is deciding where to focus your energy on, is to take the risk of deciding that you're going to focus on one thing and by default, by nature, deciding to ignore others. This is a very important concept and it will tie on to something that I will speak about later in this video. Just hold on. I have one or two more things to add and then we can cut nicely build up. Next, stop worrying about your passion. A bit of a controversial statement. We all entered engineering because we're passionate about building. Yes, this is true. But don't put so much overwhelming energy and effort into this idea of a passion. Because passion, in my opinion, comes from competence. When I think of the video games that I enjoyed the most, it's, it was the ones that I was the best at. And on the contrary, I remember going to my friends' houses and playing FIFA and me getting smoked and I'm like, I don't, I don't even like this game. I remember telling them, I don't even like this game. <laughs> I think there's something to it. We become passionate about things we are competent at. Competence comes first, truly. So this is something really important to note. Next, I also want to add that passions change. Engineers are <laughs> the best example of people that have changing passions all the time and also having simulta a lot of simultaneous ones at the same time as well. It is very uncommon for an engineer to sit in one industry, one field for their whole career. Software engineers, for example, can write code in big tech, banks, aerospace, different programming languages. Some software engineers go into modeling, go into data science. Sometimes they leave completely completely, and go into product. The world is your oyster, as the British people would say. And I think in the realm of engineering, this is even more true. Um, it's, a, it's a super multidisciplinary field. It's super interesting and life will take you and take you into mysterious places. Stop worrying about your passion so much. They will change and you only start really getting passionate about things when you're good at it. Next point I want to come across, which connects the two previous points about undirected ambition and passion, is the idea to focus on just one thing but alex university we're studying so many things yes this is true during your university uh time focus on university focus on your friends focus on meeting people educating yourself but when you but when you have breaks from university and i know those breaks are big instead of just spending your summer 
or your Easter break doing nothing, pick something. Just pick one thing you want to get good at or pick a project you want to do and just do that one thing. And no matter what, you don't stop. You just continue throughout that whole break and fantastic things will happen. Because all of a sudden your undirected ambition is now directed. You had to pick something and reject something else. You, you become an expert in a field compared to obviously your peers. I really dislike T++ because of how difficult it was. But once I just aggressively, violently pierced through that barrier, that entry level barrier, I started to really enjoy it. And now I'm actually quite sad that in my day to day software engineering job, I don't get to see any C++, but it's a really difficult journey I had to go through. That's my message for you here. The next point I wanted to speak about is finding ambitious friends. And in previous videos, I do speak about this as well. And I, t and I tell people, hey, you know, like identify the, the, the people in your cohort, the engineering students that are the best. But you know what? They don't, you know, guys, these people don't even need to be engineers. I realized that anyone who's also ambitious, it doesn't matter who it is, possesses the right traits to impact you in a positive manner. You can be an electrical engineering student and your best friend can be an art student. And if your art, if your art student friend is hustling every day, playing the guitar two hours a day, you are so much more likely to go sit into the books and study control theory and transfer functions. And you're way more likely to do it compared to having another electrical engineering friend who's lazy and plays Rocket League every day. It is way easier to achieve your goals with new ambitious friends than old unambitious friends. Alex, where do you find ambitious people? I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> However, what I do know is that if you speak to more people on a regular basis, you'll find those people. Those people also have lives. They, ha they are everywhere. They are all around you. You walk past them all the time. Interesting, ambitious people. But you have to say hello. Ask them, what do you study? What do you do? How are you? How much time do you spend on what you're doing? You can tell when someone's passionate about something, by the way, there's something that really becomes enthusiastic. I mean, look at me when I'm speaking about this. I have like an, a, a hideous smile on my face. I can't really hide it because I'm genuinely passionate about it. Um, you know, I, may, I might speak sometimes a bunch of BS here and there. But if there's something true about me is that I'm very passionate about engineering and helping you guys out. And the same goes for someone who's passionate about playing music or engineering or maths or the history. It's, that's it, guys. It's it's just something you, ah, you catch. That person's really passionate. Speak to those people. Speak to passionate people and make friends with them. And the final part is... The idea of an unfair advantage. Everyone has an unfair advantage, especially you, an engineering student. It's very useful. This is not like essential, but it's very useful to sometimes sit down and actually think to yourself, what is my unfair advantage? Engineering is a very competitive field. We by nature compare ourselves to our colleagues slash uh, course mates and as as much as it drives a lot of that ambition it also causes imposter syndrome anxiety and we forget that you know this whole race this whole journey we're on is for ourselves it's for our lives it's not for anyone else you sitting down and identifying you know what what makes you special? What makes your journey of you getting there so unique? What makes you better than everybody else in one special unique way? It will help you focus on your goals. It will help you just sit down and work towards something way easier. There'll be way less doubt. And I think that will be very, very useful. So yeah, a little bit of introspection about your unique advantage 
is very useful. And to help you figure that out, I can go through how I figured out my unfair advantage. When I was in my second year of university, I realized that my unfair advantage was asking questions. I wasn't super intelligent. My grades were good, but they weren't anything special. I was an ordinary guy. There was nothing special about me really, except one thing is that I had the balls to ask questions and look so ridiculously dumb every single day, which made me get to where I am now, okay? And realizing that meant that I knew I had something that everybody else did not have, which is was, which was really important because it gave me confidence to just continue what I'm doing and doing it more and doing it better. This made me confident in my own self, in my own abilities, and fundamentally got me to where I am now, just with a simple thought process. So think to yourself, what are you already hmm, really good at? And double down on that, and the gap will become so huge that you will be in the top whatever 0.1% of your age bracket in electrical engineering of this cohort and you can get to incredible places. Find a way to direct your ambition. Stop worrying so much about your passion. Focus on one thing. Speak to ambitious people all around the world, all around your roads and streets and bars and libraries and figure out your unfair advantage. That's everything. I hope this video helped. And if it did, tell me by commenting down below, hitting the subscribe button, liking this video, hitting the hype button, adding me up on my socials like LinkedIn, Instagram. That's everything from me. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye-bye.